All right, welcome back. So today we are working on a Typhon TLR Tune Low C new race buggy. As you see, I've made a lot of really good changes when it comes to adjusting this RC. It's working really, really well um, for what I set it up for, which is running it on blacktop. <coughs> um, with one issue that I've been faced with, and that's when I'm accelerating through a turn, this thing gets a bad push on the front. Um, now, as soon as I let off the trigger, it turns very tight. As you see, look at, look at the turning on this. Or if I just brake and turn, which this is set up for at this point, um, works really good for a tight track, tight turns where you have to break in the corners to get around the corners or let off the trigger to get around the corners. So it's good for figure eights, good for racing around cones, tight cones, but it doesn't really work for say a circle track or not really a circle track, an oval track, um, high speed banking circles because you would pretty much be on the trigger all the time you would uh so if you set up two cones and you were doing just an oval instead of a figure eight um you would like to accelerate lightly around the corners and then wide open on the straight and slightly around the corners and just to keep the, your momentum up now if you look when this thing is cranked this is what you're seeing. You're seeing 50% of the tire is not on the ground. 50% of the tire is not on the ground. What this does is when you're accelerating, the rear is pushing, you're turning, you're cranked. And what this does, if you look at the tires, it starts chafing the edges because every time you're turning you're pushing the front of this RC now I've heard a lot of comments one was if you thicken up the fluid in the back um, would that help with steering well diffing out when you when this RC is turning say this direction all the load is now on this tire this tire is going to want to lift. This rear tire is going to want to lift because it wants to turn in this way. So as soon as this starts to lift, the power that's driving this wheel is now with the diff going to be transferred to the one in the air. This is the one going to get the, the power. And the reason we call it diffing out is because as soon as this lifts off the ground, the power is going to be taken away from here and transferred over to here to get the RC to put, to put this wheel back on the ground. Now, if you make it tighter, what this is going to do is when you're turning, it's going to thicker fluid is going to give this more drive before it diffs out and sets down this tire. Since at this point, if you see some of the turns when I let off and I start to turn, this wheel as you see is coming off the ground it literally in the videos this thing is off the ground when that happens immediately it sets back down I only have 3k fluid in the rear now I went 10k up front because no matter what whether I'm turning this way or turning this way right both these wheels the weight from this rear and the momentum is going to be pushing down on this so in a turn when it's doing this both wheels are always going to be on the ground so i'm trying to make it like a front wheel drive car and pull this wheel back down whether it's that wheel 
or this wheel, if I have drive up front and I hit the trigger and this is trying to drive, it's going to want to force this wheel down quickly. And that's why I do a thinner fluid here, a thicker fluid here, and then the center I go really heavy to even out the driving force, the power from the motor to both front and rear differentials. So your center, if you go thinner with the center, when you're accelerating and these wheels get off the ground like it wants to wheelie, what it's going to do, it's going to take all the power from here and put the power up here to set the RC back down, trying to keep all the wheels on the ground. So your front and rear diffs control lifting and rolling over this way. If you start going like this, it's going to want to diff out, send all the power to these two wheels and set it down right away. The thicker you go in the fluids, the more this is going to want to go up before it diffs out and comes down. So if I double the fluids and I'm going like this, if I double the thickness of fluid, it's going to want to go like this before it sets down. Same thing this direction. Center diff is controlling this direction. So, basically, center diff is controlling your wheelie. Um, because you really never have the rear come up like this. Um, but it does happen. So if you come off a jump and you land on the front wheels and you have thin fluid in your center diff and you have that trigger nailed these are on the ground these are up in the air if this is thin then it's going to want to dip out and bring this down right away um, if you have the wheel speed there if the fluid is thick it's driving all four wheels at the same speed so when these land on the ground and these start driving like a front wheel drive car it's going to suck this down immediately as soon as you hit the ground thinner fluid if you land like this and it tries to drive it's going to slip a little and this is going to set down slowly so it all depends on how far you land on the front wheels when you're like this, you want as much drive as you can to the front wheels. And that's putting a thick fluid here. Same thing when you're a dead stop and you nail that trigger to full throttle. This starts to come up. If the fluid is too thick here, it's going to just want a wheelie. If it's too thin, it's not going to raise the wheels at all. So by thickening this up, what I'm doing is when the front wheels, if they go in the air, it's still putting equal drive, or is not, I shouldn't say equal, it's still going to add more power to the wheels that are in the air because it's still a differential. But by doing that, it's going to want to set the RC down and continue to drive forward um, with the center diff. So I tend to go heavy in the center, really thin in the rear, a little thicker up front and as you see it's given us good driving characteristics except for the push now there's two reasons for steering push on acceleration one this is another thing I like about Losi the Ackerman bar the plate right here you see there's one two there's three or four positions on this Ackerman bar is very cool that it has the adjustments a lot of Ackerman bars don't have this most have at least two positions a forward and a rear this one has I think three one two this one has three positions so it has a forward a center and a rear pivot balls versus C hub C hubs are known not to have a push um, like the pivot balls. Pivot balls are notorious for having a bad push. And that's because a C-hub, when you turn all the way, it keeps the wheel pretty flat when you're turning. Pivot ball, when you turn, it gives you this gap. Now, 
to compensate for that, what what you can compensate a couple of ways. One, you can change your camber caster, and you can give it a lot of camber, which is supposed to help with this steering push to give you the bite. And as you see, we we have camber in here, so I can pull some camber out and try to make this flatter, but. It really, with a pivot ball, doesn't work that well. Now, the Ackerman plate, pushing it all the way forward, is supposed to limit this steering angle. Limit limit this arch. It's going to bring this arch down a little less when you're turning all the way. And that's bringing it all the way forward. It's supposed to help with the pivot ball and push. But this one's all the way forward. So I'm not sure if it's all the way forward is supposed to help or all the way back. I thought it was all the way forward. Well, we are in the all the way forward position. And we're having a push only under acceleration. Under neutral, turns great. Under braking, turns even better. This thing has really, really tight steering. I think... If we pull this back, one of two things are going to happen. I'm going to lose some of that tight steering, or I'm going to gain even tighter steering. So I'm going to give that a shot first. I'm going to adjust the Ackerman bar here. I'm going to move it to an extreme, which is all the way back position. See if I can get this arch down. If this arch lessens up right here, you can see I'm going halfway on the tire so if I can lessen that up let lessen that that arch that it's getting from the uh, pivot balls by making the Ackerman adjustment then we're good and that should stop my push if this gives me more angle then we went the wrong way um, and I'd have to bring it to the forward position so I'm gonna set it all the way back See if it fixes some of this angle thing that's going on here. If I can fix some of that and then maybe camber it out a little bit and see if I can get more tire to contact the ground, I think that's going to help with steering. So that's what we're going to do right now. After I do that, we're going to get out, rip it again, and see if it's fixed our issue. If it has then I know my complete setup for blacktop. Now, this setup could also work for um, like dirt tracks or uh, dirt racing, um, gravel racing, that kind of stuff. This setup should still be fine for that, just swap out the tires. Now, when it comes to um, grass or rough terrain this setup is not going to work at all um we'll have to change the ackerman bar again we will have to change which i think even on dirt i might have to change the droop setting um because this is set up a little too tight for dirt you kind of want this a little looser and a little loosey-goosey um in dirt uh, because you're going to have have less grip I might even possibly have to make a rear bar adjustment up to give this thing some more body roll to get the weight planet on the wheel that's on the dirt. So after I finish this setup, we're going to try to fix the push through on blacktop. I'll know my blacktop settings. I'll write everything in the, in the book that I've done to get to this point for blacktop. Parking lots, asphalt, anything that's a higher grip, this setup should work great for. So I'm going to take those notations down, do that, and then I'm going to go ahead and throw on our off-road tires. I'm going to make some changes, and then we're going to try to get this thing running just as good in dirt 
as I have it running on asphalt. So let me go ahead and make this Ackerman bar adjustment, see if we can correct the front of this thing, and see if all the theories I have are actually going to work. Like I said, I'm, this, I'm new to this stuff. I know the basics of alignment just from automotive uh, automotive alignments, but it doesn't necessarily make it right. You know what I mean? Um, RC is a little different than uh, than uh, I want to say automotive, just a little bit. Now, do I have to take this bolt all the way out? get this thing to slide over because I see it is slotted as well yeah it looks like I'm gonna have to take the bolt all the way out yeah, and see it won't slide over unless I take the bolt all the way out which doesn't work because I need to hold the bottom side too now these adjustments are and that's what I like about the Losi stuff. They really thought this through when it comes to the adjustments we're making. They make them pretty pretty easy, I want to say, compared to most of the RCs I've worked on. Um, this seems to be the easiest to make some of these adjustments. See if I can get in there and get this bolt to slide back a little. So we want this thing to go all the way back now. So this has got four positions. So we're going to go from one extreme to the other just to see if I believe going back is supposed to give me tighter steering. But for some reason I have really tight steering with it all the way forward. And I could be backwards on my on my adjustment for this Ackerman bar. I'm gonna go from one extreme to the other, and that's gonna tell me if it's lessen if this lessened up my steering, then um, this will probably be maybe a carpet setting all the way back. See, I mean, that looks like it, it's turning a lot more now. I don't know. I mean, that's pretty tight there. See, and I can fit a finger in between there. And I can't over here. Let's see. I don't know. Looks like it's giving me a lot more turning there. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Yeah, see, that looks like a lot more. Man, that's going to be crazy if I can get more steering out of this. I thought I was maxed out on steering. I mean, this thing was turning super tight. And I thought there was no way I can make it turn even tighter. Usually moving the Ackerman bar back gives you tighter steering at least that's what I remember but like I said I'm not an expert on this I'm just going off some basic basic skills that I know when it comes to adjusting alignments and like I said they're pretty pretty darn basic but that's the fun thing about this RC at least for me at this point is that it's been super fun learning the adjustments because most of my bashers and the stuff I mess with um, I just don't need to do these because we're sending them off 80 foot jumps and they're probably going to wreck anyway so I'm never really worried about how well the thing is turning now my low C um, DBXL E 2.0 that's the one that's really taught me about steering on an RC because that thing steers horribly. 
and I've done a lot just to try to get that thing to steer a lot better. I like how they give you two different size Allens on this one too, because not many people have the same size Allen front and bottom. So let's see if that lessened up the angle. Yes, it did. So now it's going three quarters of the tires on the ground. Yep, instead of half, this is now planet three quarters. So I'm not sure if it put less into this. Man, that's looking pretty good. So if I'm turning this way, if I'm turning this way, this is going to want to dive down. It's going to put a lot of weight on that one. I mean, I'm still on that outer edge. It's going to give me some roll. So what I'm going to do is I'd like to take some camber out of this. But in order to take camber, I would have to replace these front pills. And how would I replace those pills? There's no bolt hole in it. So I think I would take the four bolts off pull this forward and then the pill will slide out that's what it's looking like and the pill would slide out backwards and then what I'd want to do is move it up So the, I think the little square will stay there and the outer one. It's definitely not those pills. These are the inners. These are the outers with the inners. It looks like these. Yeah, that's what it is. Hmm. I wonder if I should just try it with the Ackerman adjustment. I just don't know if that's enough. These aren't flat enough. Like this is perfect for dirt. This angle with this much, I think would be perfect for dirt. I think. Hmm. I know on high grip, you want to go up with the pill would be higher grip. Down with the pill should give you lower grip. So do, do I want to go up? If I bring it up, I don't know if that'll, that might bring it out. If I go down, it might suck it in. So I think going up with the pill should, should raise this and push this out. See, the rear is easy. I just lengthen and shorten the bar. The front, I think it has to do with these front and rear pills which I think I would want to raise this control arm and that should give it give give me some push now I can just raise the front and take the pin and do this and that would rotate my cup but I would want to rotate it forward because it's leaning so far back if I rotated this forward I don't know if rotating it back gives me more or less. I'm going to have to uh, 
think I'm gonna have to open the book on that one, on the pills. I think what I wanna do to give me more grip is to raise the pill up, raise the pin up. Raising the pin up should give me higher grip in the front, in theory, on a pivot ball setup. And even on a, on a C cup. Um, C cup, on a C hub. I think I'm going to try just the Ackerman adjustment for now. I think that's going to work really well for me. And then we're going to get some new batteries put into the remote because these batteries are dead now. I'm going to get some packs charged up. I'm going to bring this to work tomorrow, lunchtime tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and run this thing one more time. So, and then after that, we're going to try just changing the tires, running it in dirt, see if it works. I'm going to have to change the tires and change the droop to try to get it to work for dirt. And we'll see if all my other adjustments will stick. If they don't, then we'll reverse the rear, raise the, the rear up for our roll center. By raising that up, that should get rid of some of the grip and that should make more of a body roll, which should help in the dirt. Um, but we'll give it a shot. I know I got it working really, really well for asphalt. So if I'm doing tight turns, I'll pull the Ackerman bar all the way forward. It's a simple adjustment. As you see, it takes me a couple minutes to move that Ackerman adjustment all the way forward, which it might be back on the arms and forward on the whole Ackerman bar. I don't know if the bar has. See, it doesn't have. Yeah. Is there adjustments down there too? No. No, it's just the outer. So maybe this will work. Maybe high grip was all the way forward and I have the setting on the Ackerman bar wrong. But it's looking pretty good right there because it's taking some of that tweaking out when I'm turning and giving me more of a contact patch on the ground. It's either done that or it's widened my circle right now. My turns aren't as tight and that's going to also help with the front push just by doing an Ackerman bar adjustment. So we're going to give that a shot. I'm going to make one adjustment this time because I'm coming down to the fine tuning. Um, I haven't adjusted the shocks at all. Still on the 16 tooth. I'm going to leave everything else the same. Just do the Ackerman bar adjustment. I'm going to bring the two screwdrivers to work and I'm going to play with the Ackerman bar and see if that works. If that doesn't, then we're going to move on to our pills and see if I can get this push a little better. If I can go quarter trigger, that's better than no trigger. Right now it's either neutral or braking to really get this thing to turn. If I'm quarter trigger, half trigger, full trigger, forget about it. The thing just goes straight. Um, but right now if I let off to half trigger, I get some turning. If I let off to quarter, I get more turning. And then if I go to neutral and I start to turn, coming out of the turn, all I have to do is with the wheel cranked is nail the trigger and the thing will start to push straight. Um, and then I can just straighten the wheel, which makes it very drivable that way uh, because I can push through the corners. Um, but I'd rather be able to set it up for an oval track as well. Um, if I can do oval track, then I can gear up and start doing some faster speed lap times is what I'm hoping about. So we're going to try to do some lap times with some cone setup, do a figure eight pattern. We're going to do the tight oval or the tight turning. And then for a big oval, we're going to try to set it up for that as well. But there we go. Learning every day I play with this thing. It's definitely something fun to know, something good to know. And like I said, you don't have to be a track racer to set your car up proper for bashing around on the streets or racing with your buddies. I did uh, get my son, I have this out right now. His uh, Typhon, we're getting it set up just like this. So he's already done the diffs, taking him two days to do front, middle, and rear. 
his diffs were in bad, bad shape. On five runs, the front diff was packed with dirt. The rear diff was dry. Center diff was dry. Um, gears were kind of getting messed up already, and that was only five battery packs through his uh, his Typhon, his ready-to-run Typhon. So we did the same thing on his. We put 3K in the back, 100K in the center, and we went ahead and put 10K up front. So his diffs are set up like this. We're going to work on changing his uh, valving and shock fluids. Uh, we're going to start out with shock fluids on his, see if we can get as close to this. We're going to set up some cones and we're going to battle it out between the ready-to-run Typhon and the TLR Tune Typhon. So there we go, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. And as you can see now, the Ackerman bar, you got four positions on that Ackerman bar to make some adjustments. Let's see if it's going to work. There you go, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Oh, and that was another thing. Before I end this thing, we had an upper pivot ball. I think they were coming loose. So we're going to just check that real quick before I end this video. Um, I want to see, because we have a lot of play on these front wheels. I want to see if this is coming loose. I believe it is. Almost forgot about that and took it out with uh, with loose diffs or loose diff with loose front steering. There we go. feel pretty, the bolt feels pretty snug. We're maxing out, but that play is gone now. I can usually add a washer there and get rid of that play. Can I get to that? I might be able to get to that with the wheel, without taking the wheel off. Feels a little loose with these open spokes. I think I can get to it without pulling the wheel, which I can. Well, that 
looks good right there. They weren't really that loose. Um, I thought they were looser. Definitely didn't back off that much. But we were able to get all that slop back out of it. Now it's just a little bit of hub bearing play, which isn't bad at all. But there we go. There we go, guys. So it's ready. We're going to get out and rip it with just an Ackerman bar change. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you guys on my next video. Thanks for watching.